Wagwan, bro. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are doing well. I really hope you're doing well. Now, welcome to today's video, which is a video I've been thinking about doing for a while. I knew I'd do it in the international break, but today is the day I'm doing a player ratings video where I go through each player who's featured in the Premier League so far over the opening eight games, and I rank them one to ten. One being poor, ten being good, you know, five, six maybe being average, I guess five's average. And maybe talk a little bit about each player and how I feel they've performed this season for Frank Lampard's Chelsea. But before we do get into today's content, I want to quickly remind you there to subscribe to Football Therapy because I upload content every single goddamn day and I don't want you to miss out on any content. So please do subscribe to the channel. We've hit over 20k, wicked scenes. Why don't you join everyone else, subscribe and remember, hit the bell notifications icon and if you want to help Yan out, and why wouldn't you, please do like the video. Right, I have the squad on my phone. Now, like I said, I'm only going to go through players who have featured in the Premier League this season. Even probably players that have only featured a tiny bit. But, yeah, here we go. Starting with Spain's number one, Kepa Aliza Balaga. <laughs> you know what? Kepa, I'm a big fan of Kepa, great shot stopper, athletic, great penalty saver, very good footballer, good at coming off his line. You know what? There's no better in the Premier League in terms of starting position and coming off your line than Kepa Riz Balaga. Superb at that. Having said all that, he hasn't had the best season. I think there's a couple of saves he should have made and hadn't. Um, I'm not saying he's having a bad season, but I rate him quite highly and he has, hasn't been the best. He's had a couple of like fumbly moments. So I'm going to give Kepa a six. Right, big Tony Rudiger. He's played 45 minutes. I can't really judge him on that, but I'm going to just say a six because I think he was really good that first half he played and he came off injured. He's a very, very good player. It will be unfair to rank him less or higher due to the small sample size. Antonio Rudiger gets a six. I see a lot of sixes coming. Right, interesting one. Marcos Alonso, bro. So everyone was terrified of Alonso playing conventional left back. He wasn't great under Sari, especially in the latter part of Sari's reign. Emerson came in much better left back, conventional left back. But you know what? Alonso has surprised me. He's actually been very, very good in certain games. Um, I'm actually going to do it again. I'm going to give him a six. I was inclined to give him less, but you know what? He's been an imposing figure um, at left back. He's been good defensively, good in the air. He's got a couple of assists. You know what? Scrap that. Controversial. I'm giving Marcus Alonso a seven. I know all the Alonso haters are hating that, but... I've done it, mate. He got a seven. Andreas Christensen, he's made a couple of mistakes, but he's been pretty solid. I feel like he's looked good at times, and actually when Chelsea have been struggling defensively and he's in there, he can be pretty good. I'm going to give Andreas Christensen a seven, nothing immaculate. Uh, you know, I was tempted to give him a six, but I want to be kind in this video. So, Andreas Christensen, you know what, mate? You can have a seven. Cesar Azpilicueta, Dave. <laughs> the good defensive right back that hadn't been good going forward but suddenly was putting in good crosses but then wasn't good going forward but then suddenly was good going forward but then was really poor defensively for a while but then picked up form at the beginning of the season the dude was like a free it was like oh this guy needs to retire he needs to, you know reach james can't come quick enough remember that remember that and he was really really poor he was our worst player um for a, for a time says as for the he has picked it up but because i'm raised the whole entirety of the eight games as Piliqueta gets a five even though he's been quite decent lately you gotta rank him for the whole eight games so he gets a five right following the Premier League list here on my phone next up is Emerson <laughs> injured Emerson very very good left back I really like him obviously probably shouldn't have played that game when he told Frank Lampard he was cool to play even though he wasn't cool to play so I don't know if I'd rank him down on that because that's like an unprofessional thing to do. Probably not because we're talking about performances on the pitch. His statistics on when he's been on the pitch are actually immaculate, Emerson. He's been so, so good. He was actually Chelsea's highest ranked player for a while and who scored in terms of how they rate players. Um, he was the highest rated uh, defender, left back or whatever in the league. I'm actually going to give before he got injured because it would be unfair to rank him after he got injured. Ignore my brain just shutting down there. I'm gonna give Emerson a nine, dude. He's been he's been awesome. Emerson gets a nine. He's one of the best left backs in Europe on his day. When fit, dude gets a nine. Ha. Reese James was Reese James played in the Premier League. He played in the Champions League against Grimsby as well. I don't think he played in the Premier League. 
I'm not going to rate him. Kurt Zuma. Now, Zuma's been up and down. Again, he's one of those players that came in to the team early doors because Frank wanted to definitely keep him and not have him being lured away to Everton. So he sort of put a bit of honey potion in his ear and said, yeah, you're my boy, come to Chelsea. And he was in stinky form for the first few games. Zuma did pick up and have a couple of really good games, but he was so, so poor early doors, much like Cesar Azpilicueta. So again, I'm going to rate Kurt Zuma w with a five because it would be unfair to just do him on the, the latter couple of good games he's had. Do you know what I mean? So, sorry Kurt, you gotta get a five big man. Fakayu Tomore, come into the team, revelation, superstar, Derby's player of the season last season, absolute bad man. Tomori's pretty easy for me, everyone knows if you watch his channel, I really like him. Superb recovery pace, good on the ball, good defender generally, man gets an eight. Jorginho, Jorginho. Now, okay, I'm gonna rank Jorginho, or rate whatever we're calling it, in terms of what he brings. He's a metronomic player, he's good at positioning, and he's a leader. And at all of that, he's been superb. So he gets an eight. Now, I don't think that's too generous. I don't think that's, I would say, I was tempted to give him a nine, but he'd have to be maybe a more of like a defensive master. But the way Lampard sets up, and when you play Jorginho, he's actually got good interceptive and tackling stats regardless. Um, really high, surprisingly high. In terms of positional play and knowing where to go and telling his teammates where to be and just generally having a good morale and a positive mood. Uh, mood? Move? Mood? Mood. And bringing leadership to the team, he's invaluable. Frank Lampard thinks he's invaluable. Man gets an 8 easy. Next up, Ngolo Kante. Now, in in, Ka in Kante? Dude, what the hell is wrong with me today? I'm like malfunctioning big time. Right, Kante has developed as a player. We've seen him score long range goals, dribbling goals this season, and we've seen him have a couple of his games when he's been at his interceptive, destroying, high octane best with good pressing. I have seen him do a couple of poor games. Um, I'd be inclined to give Kante a 9 just because he's so, so good, and he had one game where he was just amazing. But he did have one performance that wasn't too great. I'm not sure that wasn't in the Premier League. You know what? The, I'm making the rules here. Golo like Kante gets a 9 just because he's probably Chelsea's only world class player at the moment. Um, yeah, dude gets a 9. Defensive master. Now he can press really well. He can score goals. He links up attacking play really well. He gets a 9. Ross Barkley next. Heavily, heavily disappointing this season. Now, if you watch my channel, you know after pre-season I was on the Ross Barkley hype train. I think I said he'll be our top goal scorer, which is making me look funny now, but I don't care. Anyway, he's been really poor in the Premier League this season. He's shown flashes of his ability, which he does have. We see it in an England shirt. We see it now and again at Chelsea. But he has been disappointing when he's on the pitch. I'm going to give him a 4. Sorry, Ross. Christian Pulisic. Now, very, very talented. Got a couple of assists in only three starts. I think five appearances in total. I did do a video on him recently. Go and watch it. I'm a big fan of Pulisic. I'm not one of these people that thinks he should just be in the team now for the sake of it. I think there probably is a problem with work rate. Um, he has underwhelmed when he was on the pitch. Uh, maybe that's a confidence thing, but uh, I'm going to give Pulisic uh, a six, and that's a push because he's got the assist. And that's not because he's been bad or maybe he has not but he hasn't been good but the, I want to be kind to him and say it's because he hasn't bedded into the team yet and he's finding his way in English football so I'll give him a six. Mateo Kovacic is easy for me very very good not amazing but it does a job makes the team look solid when he plays left center mid incredibly good ball progressor and dribbler just one or two goals would have made him a lot lot more but I'm very happy to give Mateo Kovacic a seven for this season in the Premier League very solid, talented, silky player, but nothing too special. Mason Mount, very, very good. Four goals from midfield, very versatile player, can play in the number 10, can play other places in midfield, and obviously play left wing. He knows Frank Lampard's football better than anyone else. Um, he's always lethal, he's always a threat. He can score quite a few different types of goals. He's very good at linking up play and pressing from the front, and his energy levels are superb start to finish. Um, gets an eight. He gets, he's not N'Golo Kante getting a 9 or whatever, but because he's still a kid, but in terms of being one of the Premier League standout performers this season, he has to have an 8. Well done, lad. <laughs> Billy Gilmore came on for like a few minutes, the 5. <laughs> Pedro, right now, Pedro for me has been a bit underwhelming. It's been, I thought he'd be really good for Frank Lampard this season, um, more so than Willian actually, I thought, but you know what? 
He's been really underwhelming. He's very good at pressing, or he's got high energy levels. I'm not sure his pressing's uh, applied that well, but I'm gonna give him a five, Pedro, because I can't really feel comfortable giving him any higher. I know he's a limited game time too, so he gets a five, dude. Oli G, um, again, limited play time. He looks like he just doesn't suit Frank Lampard's football in terms of link-up play and style and philosophy. And uh, I don't know, because he doesn't have that like one number 10 like Eden Hazard that he's gonna bounce the ball up with and combine. He's playing in like a proper front three where He's not really feeding the wide forwards well enough. I feel like he hasn't had a chance to get involved, even though I know Juvru is a very valuable player and I know he brings a lot, but I'm going to give him a five as well. Callum Hudson Adoy next up. Again, limited play time, and you know, he hasn't been scoring or assisting. I think he might have an assist or something. But as soon as he's on the ball, you can tell the whole team gets something different in terms of offense. He's got a very different play style, and you can tell he's incredibly dangerous on the ball and I'm just gonna give him a six because he makes the team look different when he's on the ball even with limited game time so six and I'm sure by the end of the season the boy will be on a nine right Willian surprise package dude I want to give him an, uh, a nine but I'm not going to because I feel like he took a while to get into it in his first game or two he was really stinking out of the place but like Frank Lampard said, he's probably been Chelsea's best player the last three games across all competitions. I am ranking this just for the Premier League, but in terms of defensive work, pressing, attacking combinations and the odd goal, willian has been superb. He's been a great example for the young players. He has to get an eight, so well done, Willian. Tammy, 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 Abraham. Whoa, Tammy, Tammy. Tammy Abraham, easy, Premier League's joint top goal scorer. He's been a revelation. He's sort of gone for adversity early doors in, in the season. Scored all kinds of goals, really nice goals, really nice touches, really nice finishes. Tammy Abraham, he gets a 10. Because if you think about it, what more can you expect from him? Like literally, what more can you expect? Maybe he could have scored against Liverpool or something. If he wasn't already, if he was second season in the Premier League, he'll get a nine. But because no one expected this from him, this is top, top notch. I'm going to give Tammy Abraham a 10. I mean, come on, let the boy have a 10. He gets a 10. And finally, Michy Bershwai, who obviously is the sub striker at the moment. He's not kicking up a fuss. He's just getting his head down and doing the business. He's come on, scored that goal with Christian Pulisic when he combined. Very nice finish. Um, he does look a bit like selfish when he comes on. Like he's just gagging to score a goal in limited time. But you know what? Often you back him to score a goal in limited time. I'm going to give Batshuayi a 7. Considering the amount of time he's played and how he's looked when he's on the pitch. Again, limited sample size. But because his attitude is so, so good. And when he comes on, he just wants to play for the team. He kisses the badge. He's doing all he can for the coach to impress him. And he's scoring goals and stuff. And although he's not been amazing because he's not on the team, dude gets a seven as a super sub. Well done, the Batsman. Right, so I think that's it in terms of players who have played in the Premier League this season rated. What do you think? Get down in the comments. Let me know if you disagree with any of my ratings for the players this season in the opening eight games. I'll be really interested to hear if you want to dispute something or if you just agree with me and want to tell me how awesome I am. Get down in the comments. If you have enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like the video and you're welcome to join me and the rest of the Football Therapy Goat gang in the Discord server that you can join via Patreon. Link in the description. Costs just one dollar and you can also Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter at Football Yannick. That is it from me, ladies and gentlemen. You lot enjoy the international football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby